Welcome back. So this is a video I've been planning to make for quite a while about my favorite module, the Picasa SSP. The Picasa SSP is a multifunction digital Eurat module. I actually have it in a separate case because I actually like to use it so much with different racks and, and I also want it to be a bit mobile. The way that the Picasa SSP functions is it acts like a virtual module. So something like VCV rack. So that means that we have various modules that we can connect together to perform all sorts of different functions. So the Picasa SSP can be a synth, a sequencer, an FX unit. And because it's actually so powerful, it can be all of these things at once. So let's have a look at the interface. What do we have? So obviously up front and center is the beautiful display. We then have encoders, which can be used to control various parameters and lots of buttons that can switch parameters, turn things on and off. Then on the right hand side, we have 16 inputs for Eurorack signals. These are obviously both suitable for audio and DC. And similarly, we have eight outputs, which can be used for CV and audio. Then we have USBs at the top. These can be used for MIDI and also the Picasa SSP can act as an audio interface with an amazing 24 inputs and 24 outputs. This makes it ideal for a hybrid Eurorack computer system. I love connecting this thing to VCV rack or even just using all of those outputs for multi-tracking. So the purpose of this video is to show you how I use the Picasa SSP and why I think it's so valuable rather than be a tutorial. But I do want to show quickly how it works because how it works is one of the reasons that I actually like the Picasa SSP so much. Now I'm going to go through the things that I like. Number one is the quick patching capabilities of the Picasa SSP. So let's do this from a blank patch. First thing I want to do is to take from my Eurorack some input. In this case, I've got marbles into rings creating some sound. So if we've got marbles and rings, we need clouds. So let's take that input and feed it into clouds. We connect the modules. I'm taking input number one into clouds. We enable the input on clouds. And I obviously then need to output it. So we take the output from clouds and we enable the inputs, the outputs on the output module. I forgot to actually send the output. And there we are. We have clouds being run on the SSP. Now I've actually got my outputs running directly to my Octatrack, but of course this could be going anywhere. It could be going back into my Eurorack. And I've got eight physical outputs to here. Now the other thing, of course, is that at this time I could also be multi-tracking this into my computer. So I could be taking the dry feed and the wet feed over to the computer into say Ableton and I've got a good way to actually balance for later production. Now let's have a look at what we've got on, oh, so this is a built-in recorder, it wasn't the button I meant to press. Okay so this is the screen for clouds, we can obviously do the normal kind of things that we might expect. So. Now, obviously, okay, that's the clouds module, but what about if I wanted to do something different? 
Okay, let's create some modulation because that's important. Let's connect an LFO, which actually is audio rate, but we'll sort that out. We'll come into the LFO, we'll take it down from audio rate and we'll actually up the rate a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect that LFO to clouds and let's take a square wave into freeze because, well, I love doing that. And then simply we come in here, enable the input on freeze. And that's the point. It's just so simple. So let's look at another patch I prepared. Now, what's going on here is a little bit more integration with the Eurorack system. So we've, we've gone from that basic patch where we had clouds running down here. And what we've actually done is taken these two inputs from marbles. So this is a trigger input and a volt proactive input. And then what I've done is I've taken the trigger input and I've delayed it. So I've got two delays here and then I feed those into rings that are running on the Picasso SSP. So now I've got yet more possibilities. I've now got two rings running in here and a Picasso SSP. And we can see here the CPU load and it's nothing. It's not just a screen, by the way. We've got loads of racks over here. We've got up to uh, 16 racks, so 16 by 8. Quite a lot of modules. Obviously, like any digital system, you are limited at some point by the CPU, but there's plenty of that in the Picasso SSP. So, developing this idea a little bit further, we can see that I've got a slightly more complex patch here where I've got the SSP actually having a couple of instruments, um, again with clouds and a mixer and things. But this time what we're doing is we're integrating Eurorack by sending CV. In particular, I'm getting CV here from my sequencer. So I'm gonna add a separate channel here. One of the nice things that we can actually get with the SSP is we can actually see, if we come to the input module, we can actually see the signals here. Similarly, if we come to the output module, we can also see what's going on the output. And you can actually see generally there are a lot of these scopes in place. And these numbers up here are here because we can actually attenuate and offset any input or output signal, which is, again, a really handy feature. So the third feature that I really enjoy with the SSP is the fact that we can integrate it with the computer as well. So here I've actually got the Uster coming into the SSP and then it's sending out that CV to VCV rack, which I've just done. Now I've got a little video clip here of VCV rack running. Uh, unfortunately, OBS was causing an awful lot of clicking so uh, I can't actually show that live, but you can see the basic thing that's going on here is that we've now got the ability to have the hands-on control from Eurorack. We've got the power of the SSP to actually be able to play instruments and FX. And we can see these here. And we can also then actually get those out to the computer. And also we can get audio and CV back from the computer into the SSP. So this is fantastic. This is actually the fourth point that really gets to me here is that the SSP is very, very flexible. Here we're playing it as a bridge role between the computer and Eurorack. We're also using it as an FX. We're also using it for a synth voice. All of these things stand alone and we can just plug it in wherever. This is why I've got it in a separate rack in fact so that I can actually connect it to so many different things. We've also even got things here like a, a recorder that can record audio and CV directly from the Eurorack and play it back. And we've also got countless modules here as well. 
So if I come into here, we can see we've got a whole stack of modules that we can have. And even with all this going on, we can see that the CPU load is very small. So the fifth thing that I really love about the SSP and is important to me particularly is extensibility. The fact that actually I can create VSTs and other people means that we can extend it beyond what Picasa are doing. In fact, many of the modules that you've seen actually are VSDs I created. So for example, this is a mix module that I created. It's a VST. It's got eight channels inputs. It's got four destination outputs, abilities to mute and solo, etc. You've seen plats and you've also seen um, clouds and you see rings, all VSTs that I've created. And in fact, I've now created, I think, 14 VSTs, including this one. So this is called data and it allows us to get pictures of waveforms and also analyze data like what the minimum and maximum voltage is coming in. So of course, the SSP is not perfect, nothing is, there are drawbacks. So I want to talk now about some of those and also how I overcome them. So the first thing is, it's obviously a large module. This actually is why I've got it in a separate rack, but it, and it also allows me to actually use it with other racks. But in that large module, you've got an awful lot of functionality. Then we have price. There's no doubt it is expensive module. However, let me explain how I managed to buy it. I actually sold a number of modules. First of all, I sold clouds because I knew I would be able to implement clouds on the SSP. And in fact, it works better than the original clouds module that I had. Not only has it got better ADCs within the SSP, but also clouds consumes modulation like nobody's business. And I was running out of modulation within my main rack because clouds was eating it. So here I can create lots of modulations within the Picasso SSP and not have to buy more modules. The other module that I sold was data. Now that I actually sold it originally because I knew that Picasso SSP had a lot of scoping functionality already. But recently I created this module to cover the really the last things that I was using data for. Then finally, I sold the ES8. In fact, I was going to buy an ES9. And you might know that that's actually a pretty expensive module. And the point is that the Picasso SSP is able to cover that functionality. 24 channels in and 24 channels out over SSP to the computer is actually better, much better than the ES9 can provide. So although it's expensive, I've actually covered most of the functionality. However, there's the elephant in the room when it comes to multifunction modules generally. And that is, once you start having lots of modules, you've got a page around them to get to the various parameters. Now, the Picasso SSP supports MIDI to CV. So you can actually use it as a MIDI to CV interface, but that also means that you can use a MIDI controller like this Electro One and actually get it to send MIDI, which will get converted to CV and then can modulate parameters in various modules. However, I wanted to actually make that a little bit easier. So what I've actually done is implement MIDI Learn. Now we can see here that we can basically come in here and we can change parameters on the Picasso SSP. I can get to all sorts of different ones. Make it sound all sorts of different. So we're getting to modules here that which are not active. They're the, the, we're using the rings module here, which is obviously not the current module being shown. So this is pretty handy. We can actually also see here that we can get bi-directional MIDI controls. So if I alter a parameter on the SSP, then it can update the Electro one as well. 
So that means I can actually create a performance interface. I don't have to rely upon the Picasso SSPs screen only. I can actually move a lot of the controls over here into the Electra one. And we could do things like freezes, etc. Now, the, the reason this works is I've actually uh, implemented all my VSTs with VST parameters, and that's actually what's being modulated here. And it's, it's very, very quick to do. Let, let me actually show you. So, so let me show you quickly how we get into doing MIDI Learn. So we basically hold down the two shift buttons and this brings up the extra panel behind these VSTs. And let me show you how I've done it. Obviously I've already learnt these parameters but we can actually get rid of these. And all I simply do to learn them is hit the learn button, click over here, go onto my MIDI controller, take a parameter, wiggle it, wiggle it on the thing, do another parameter, another one, another one, another one. <laughs> and now we've got all chaos going on. That's it, click learn, and that's it. I've learned the parameters. And that's it, it's all very simple. So that's really what I wanted to show. As I say, the five things that I really like about the Picasso SSP is first, it's quick to patch, it's ability to interface audio and CV to your rack, it's ability to audio, it's ability to interface CV and audio to a computer, it's flexibility of acting as many different things all at once. And then finally, it's extensibilities. And I think actually that justifies the price and also the physical space that it takes up. Of course, we all have different needs, so it might not work for you, but I'm very much enjoying it. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope this has been interesting.